I saw a lot of Mets fans that were um, whining and saying DeGrom never wanted to be here. I, I don't think that's the case at all. I think that he saw this bag in a state with no state income tax and a, and a chance to get paid unlike any other pitcher at 34 years old that we've ever seen for that long of a time. Now, the contingency plan is fucking awesome. And I think that the Mets came out on top two years, $86 million for Justin Verlander with what, a mutual option for a third? Yes, it's it's a vested option. So if he throws 140 innings in 2024, he gets 35. He gets 35 million dollars. 42 which, years old. If Justin Verlander is throwing 140 innings, he's worth 35 million at age 42. I don't care. I don't yes, care. Um, and you. I know he's not. You know, I, I look at Roger Clemens and what he did at age 42. I know Clemens was allegedly juicing. I don't know if he still was at that point. I, I don't care. I, there's the generational talents that have proven that they can stay healthy. They usually do into their 40s. Like those guys are just built different, right? We talk about DeGrom. He's obviously not one of those guys in terms of like being able to pitch into his 40s. But uh, I think Verlander is. And I think just seeing what he did coming off of that Tommy John surgery w- w- was very clear. I ask you this question. I think this is what, what it really boils down to. And I know there's a sentimental hit that comes from losing Jacob DeGrom. I'm well aware of that. Um, and, and I would say, you know, a healthy DeGrom is obviously – Still better than Justin Verlander somehow, which is crazy to say, I think. Uh, Probably better. Uh, Although what what Verlander did this year was pretty absurd. If I told you, hey, you got to bet your life on this, or let's say $40 million on this if you had it, who's throwing more innings over the next two seasons? Jacob DeGrom or Justin Verlander? Where are you putting your money? There's zero question. Like I'm shoving all that money in the Justin Verlander camp. That's the thing. That's and that's what every that's what everybody would say, right? That's what everybody would agree upon. And um, not only that, you're so you're you're getting more likely a safer and better ROI on the next two years. You're also saving yourself liability on the back three years, right? You have an option that protects you in the third year of the deal, and then you don't have to worry about four and five. So you're you're safer on the back end and you're safer on the front end. And oh yeah, you're getting a Hall of Famer anyways. Who, by the way, if the Mets had Justin Verlander last year, we're probably talking about a different World Series potentially. We're talking about a different division. We're talking about a, a totally different situation. And that's not to knock DeGrom, but the best ability is availability, no matter how good you are. So when we're all in the same boat here that you know, you'd know you rather have that money invested in someone that's going to be on the field, the only possible rebuttal that a Mets fan can give is, oh, well, Steve Cohen is rich. Why doesn't he just pay everybody and just do it? Which I don't want to hear that because at the end of the day, even though Steve Cohen is the richest owner and you know has this boundless amount of money, he's not where he is because he made bad investments. And I would say, you know, depending on on who you are, and if you have this option and Justin Verlander and Degrom at that contract, which obviously they didn't match, it's objectively a fact that I think Justin Verlander is the better investment and you can't fault an owner for making the better investment while still investing to win, right? It wasn't like, see you DeGrom. We're going to go bring back Taiwan Walker. It was sorry, DeGrom, this isn't going to work, but we're going to relocate that money, reallocate that money to another hall of famer who is more likely to be available and gives us some more safety on the back end. It's impossible yep. not to like it for the Mets. And think about when the window is going to close for the New York Mets, right? Brandon Nimmo is in free agency, but you you look at the other big boppers. Lindor signed long-term. He's no issue here. Um, but Pete Alonso, final year of arbitration is 2024. So he's off the books in 25. And that's Jeff when they're going to want to pay him. Right? Jeff McNeil, final year of arbitration is 24. He's off the books in 25. Like, there's a lot of scenarios like this. And think about Max Scherzer, man. I mean, he's done after 24. He's off the books in 25. So here you go with a vesting option on Verlander for 25. So it either clicks really well in 23 and 24, and you re-up with Verlander. You re-up on a one-year-by-one-year basis with Scherzer. You sign Pete Alonso to massive money. You give McNeil an extension, and you keep the good vibes rolling. Or you've got closure after the 2024 season and you blow it the hell up. And that DeGrom deal, how DeGrom just got paid, was not conducive to that situation for the New York Mets. 
What the New York Mets wanted to do was win as many games as humanly possible in 23 and 24, try and win a World Series in the next two years, and address it in 25. Edwin Diaz, player option in 26, Starling, Starling Marte, not getting any younger. You know, that's a guy that by then is going to be 36, 37. Um, I don't know how much, you know, how many, how many more years of control he has off the top of my head. Uh, he's uh, He's got 21 million in 25, and then he's off the books in 26. Yeah, so it's very obvious that their window is the next two years. And you know, you're going to sign yourself up on the back end with DeGrom where, you know, it's an uncertain future at that point. So they push all the chips forward. They give themselves the best bet in the next two years, I think, with Verlander and everything else that they have going on here. So I love the move. Um, if you lose a Hall of Famer, add a Hall of Famer who's been more available. Like, it's pretty awesome. I think Verlander is going to be a great fit in New York. Verlander and Scherzer in the final phase of their career is really awesome. Really, really awesome. Um, it reminds me of some of you know the the old Braves rotations that we saw, maybe depending on who the third piece is going to be. But mm. I, I don't know who the Tom Glavin is going to be of this bunch. They clearly don't have it yet. Uh, but I mean, just having these two guys at the top, it was, I mean, you look at what Max Scherzer did last year. I know he battled some injuries. It was more like, you know, muscular, oblique, abdominal stuff, not arm related as much. Um, You manage their innings enough in the regular season. I mean, these are two still of the best pitchers in baseball. Scherzer was one of the best pitchers. You had one of the best seasons he's ever had last year, which is crazy to say. It's hard to say that the Mets aren't better. Because you also know that this means that they're going to probably be comfortable giving out a long-term deal because you just highlighted all of the all of the financial flexibility they have. You imagine they're going to pay Pete Alonso. I think they're going to do everything in their power to make sure Pete Alonso isn't playing anywhere other than New York, uh, other than Queens, you know, for the duration of his baseball career. Uh, and same with McNeil. I think they're going to try to retain both those guys. But it's a lot easier to retain both those guys when you don't have a, you know, 30 something million dollar deal committed annually to a guy that might not be available for you. And even if he is, you don't know what he's going to look like then. So it allows the Mets to be free in 2024, 2020 or 2025, which is important because they're going to look totally different in 2025. I can tell you that there'll be a few familiar faces, but it's going to be a totally different ball club. And I think they want to have that flexibility for the most part, other than the Lindors and, you know, whoever else they might give a long-term deal to. Uh, but if they, I tweeted this too, I'm curious what you think. If they commit this money to Nimmo and Verlander, you know, it, are you, are you really that upset about DeGrom? Like, would you rather have Jacob DeGrom or Brandon Nimmo and Justin Verlander? Like it's, no, I, I I would rather have Nimmo and Verlander. I, absolutely, I in a vacuum, I do think I would rather have Verlander than Degrom for the next two years, next yeah. three years. So yeah. that's my thought here. Last thing on the Mets, they're already pretty much at the luxury tax threshold, and they have yet to agree to any arbitration deals. They have yet to re up on the pre arb guys. Like they have two hundred and twenty three million dollars committed to the guys that are signed to contracts right now. So Steve Cohen's gonna give Major League Baseball a massive sum of money at the end of this year. I promise yeah, you that. Exactly. So that's even more so like how much more do you want him to spend? I don't know. I've got no idea. Um, 